silly but entertaining film called 2012. Um, yeah. It graphically depicted the snowfall of ash that would uh, engulf the... the well, it was, it was Hollywood, right? Yeah, it was. But, you know, the special effects were good, and it didn't take itself too seriously, so I, I chose to enjoy it, you know. Um, but if... I mean, we are really at the 62 million year point uh, for mass extinctions of the kind that would be um, uh, would occur most likely if the Yellowstone caldera went, and we're just about at the 650,000 year um, blow point for Yellowstone, apparently. So we're in the red zone. But the, what, what I believe about it is this: that there's no alarm clock inside the Yellowstone caldera waiting to go off. It can be perturbed. It can be, once it's in the red zone, once it's ready to pop, it can pop at any time, and something can pop it. Now, I've spoken to several scientists who believe that the in increased solar activity, perhaps induced by moving into the interstellar energy cloud, perhaps for some other reason, can trigger the supervolcano, uh, particularly trigger areas of the crust where there is more metal um, because the, the metal conducts the incoming solar radiation. So that's something I think that we can we we can productively monitor. If we see that there's an increase in conductivity in the in the terrain around the Yellowstone supervolcano, well then we know that the the odds are are increasing that it'll go off. And then we you know get the heck out of there and make some provisions. I mean, it's there's it's only a limited extent that we can defend ourselves because it's not the kaboom that really will. Get us! It's the ash and soot that'll fly up in the atmosphere and blo block out the sun and, and and prevent the growing seasons. Whether it's related to 2012, I couldn't say. I, I find no smoking gun of evidence like I do the solar climax of 2012. But if there is a link between that solar climax and the potential eruption of Yellowstone, then then we've got even bigger problems than the old power grid. Yeah, we sure do. Okay, a few more calls here. Sacramento we go. Joshua's turn on Coast to Coast. Go ahead, Joshua. Hi, George, and um, Hi. your guest there. It's a pleasure to speak to both of you. Um, I just had a, a quick comment and um, a question for your guest. Uh, earlier, your guest made reference to a, um, I guess he said, sort of a stellar energy cloud. It yes. Was your, um, it it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh, David Wilcox's research um, about evolution and this cloud that we're moving uh, close to. And I was kind of wondering if you'd heard of his research at all or if you've looked into him. And also I was going to say, George, you should have him on your, your show again as a guest. I think it's been a while because he's a pretty interesting guy to, yeah, you know, it's to been listen a, to. Been about, on. Been about and I'll go ahead months. and I'll take my answer off, off to you. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I ran into David Wilcox. We were both shooting the same sci-fi channel special on 2012. And, uh, uh, you know, he's he's a gregarious guy, and I got uh, a bit of a sense of his work, and then followed up on it. Um, I, you know, I I think he he might he might well be on to the same phenomenon. Um, I tend to pay more heed to uh, Dr. Dmitriev and also the scientists who publish in Nature magazine because they did the hard work of of going through through terabytes of, of, of data re relayed by the Voyager spacecraft. And, you know, they, they're they much less speculative and much more um, scientific data oriented, which is just my my preference. It's, 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 it's not inherently superior or inferior. I think it's just that's what I like. So that's why I, I tend to refer to them more than to Wilcox's work. Okay, we go to Fremont, Nebraska. Sean, you're on Coast to Coast. Hi, Sean. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I, you know, when I've been planning for stuff like this for, for, for quite some time and just planning on uh, staying in place, one of the things I'm doing is building a, a big Faraday cage here in my basement, just so whether it be a solar flare or a you know, nuclear blast in the atmosphere. And the one thing I'm concerned with is, you know, I'm planning, or actually I'm, I'm working on becoming energy self-sufficient between solar and wind. But now, what's the probability of after something like this happening, the government just coming in and confiscating everything? Oh Lord, um, I think the probability is not insignificant. I hate to say it, but I mean, basically, if if we were to do 
worst case scenario, you know, where a an 1859 sized storm were to knock out the power grid for months or years for much or all of the nation, you'd have you'd have the choice between chaos and absolute uh, uh, despotic control, you know. And uh, um, I I I think though that if if you're if what you're building is is just tailored to your own home and isn't particularly transportable or removable or expandable in some way, that it would be less attractive to them and therefore safer. But that's just uh, my best off-the-cuff speculation. I mean, yeah, you know, I'm sure that the powers that be will, will try to, to maintain their power. What did your publisher, Broadway, say about your work? I mean, did that were, were they scared? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's funny. They, they, they were... Um, pleasantly encouraging until the House of Representatives <laughs> voted unanimously. That was the funny thing. That seemed to communicate to them more than anything else, because I think they just sort of heard scientists, 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 and kind of sort of, well, yeah, whatever. But when for, when the full House agreed on something, you know, unanimously, it just kind of jolted them away because, you know, no, nobody on the Capitol Hill agrees on anything with the, the other party. So, uh, that's when that's when all of a sudden you know I, I began getting hey can you do this and can you do that and can you write another piece and can you you know like I, I saw the wave of excitement rise. All right, Lori is in uh, Quinell, British Columbia, in Canada, on the international line. Lori, you're up with us. Go ahead. Thanks so much, you guys. Uh -huh. um, I was wondering um, where you guys will be on the 21st of. December. Well, I'll tell you where I'll be. I'll be broadcasting. It'll be a Friday night, and okay, I, cool. <laughs> I will be on the air with about 22 guests. <laughs> Can I ask? I have a couple more questions. Sure. Um, I would like to ask you, guess this Lawrence, right? Lawrence yes. it is. Okay. Have you heard of the Camino? No, I haven't. It, it's a like a pilgrimage from the south of France all the way oh, across yeah, sure. Spain to the ocean? Yes, yeah, I just didn't um, put it together. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, I'm just wondering, like, how do you feel about that? Like, um, it's been there for like 2,000 years. Um, I think it'd be a wonderful thing to do, and uh, I, I, I love I love France anyway, and it's it is my second language. Um, and you gave me a great idea for what I'd, if if I uh, make a little money to to do, to do soon enough, but uh, I, I don't I don't see the direct bearing on, on on protecting oneself except in, in, in sort of a spiritual envelope which is is good. Any more follow up question? For me? Yeah you. Okay. Uh, actually I have one more question. Actually okay. something I have to say. I've been trying to go get a hold of uh e eFoodsdirect uh dot com. All right. That, on, that, uh, that's very easy to yeah. Every time I, I get into it, the page comes up, like the logo and everything. But in the middle, it says um, this page does not exist. What page are you going to? eFoods Direct. No, that's not it. It's eFoods Direct slash. eFoodsDirect.com. Yeah. Slash ship free. I know. Okay. No, yes. it works for me. So try it again. Could be your computer. Let's go to Salt Lake City, Utah. Hi, Keith. Go ahead. Hi. Thank you, George. You're my hero in the, uh, yeah, but, uh, in the Info Wars. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Orange, uh, as you said last hour, different points of view converge on the same value. I believe, like uh, the city of Nineveh, we can all avoid or at least have divine protection from the prophesied calamities by turning back to God and to our ancestors as the shaman. Uh, told you, right. I, and and by not so doing, um, you know, would be the cause of the fall of the West. Malachi, the prophet of the last Old Testament book, speaking of the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, uh, talked about the the hearts of the children turning to the fathers. And if it were not so, the whole earth would be utterly wasted at its coming. Oh. On... Um, September 21st, 1823, Joseph Smith, prior to receiving the Book of Mormon from an angel who identified himself as Moroni, the son of 
Mormon, uh, an ancient American prophet, quoted that reference from 